Hi guys, this is Ram Powdell, CPA and CME from Ontario, Canada. Today I chose a topic uh, of prepaid schedule. So why I chose this topic prepaid schedule? So prepaid by definition, this is a prepayment of the business transactions. So there are two types i don't want to say exactly two types but uh, there are various you know types of the invoices you get from your suppliers or vendors but one of the thing you need to pay attention is the prepayment for the bill for the services so if business um, has the obligation you know for the prepayment like mostly like you know rent if it is a small rent amount that maybe business has to pay you know 12 month rent in advance like on january 1st um, post also company has the liability insurance uh, you know they always buy the insurance to make sure that you know company has enough protection if anyone uh, does not happy with the company services or anything happens in the future so that's a very common in north america and that type of the services uh, the insurance company request for the prepayment for a whole year in advance so that also uh, you need a prepaid schedule uh, you, you you have to create a prepaid schedule and you need to book the prepaid entry at the end of every month also you have a trade show like uh, could be the trade show in December could be trade show in in uh, June July but you may need to reserve the spot like you know paying 75% uh, or 50% of the deposit or kind of the thing that is also prepayment there could be many more, many more like, you know, could be subscription. Uh, if you need to subscribe the portal, like uh, to get the uh, maybe reports or maybe some information, some leads, then you may need to register for two years or three years. Even you get a better discount, something. So when AP gets the invoices you know early in the morning ap has to filter those invoices if uh, any of the invoice falls on the prepaid uh, category when ap records that invoice in the system what happens that ap records that invoice as you know prepaid like payment if it is a prepaid rent a prepaid rent uh, debit and bank will be credited because the payment is made from the bank prepaid itself an asset account which will appear on the balance sheet side of the of the financial statements so anything you see uh, in the balance sheet then you have to have a proper schedule to justify that balance there and every end of the month you need to go and reconcile the prepaid schedule and book the prepaid entry like literally that's the entry we are going to create today and this concept i'm going to share you is a highly automation approach because it's not just only prepaid i'm going to teach you today i'm going to teach you how can you reduce your time you know you spend to create a prepaid entry at the end of the month i just want you to spend maybe a, a five minutes or six minutes so i will share you a lot of like real old examples so that you can literally follow that and also set up a similar process to your company so that you can reduce uh, the timing significantly to reconcile your prepaid schedule so what we are going to do today is 
before we do i want to share you some of the concept here some of the consideration you need to do when your accountant right records the prepaid invoice in the erp system uh, he has to keep he or she has to keep the backup like both invoice and the payment remittance or confirmation um, uh, they can scan that and then save that in a proper folder or they can even create a folder a physical folder and then keep that all the backup there so that if auditor anyone ask in future usually when you have a schedule during the audit time auditor request that schedule with the backup so it's so easy to go and then pull the backup and then provide uh, those backups to the auditor and if you do not have any invoice then you have to keep fully sign this agreement or fully sign you know uh, rental rental agreement with the landlord for simplicity you always build the prepaid schedule with net of tax what does net of tax means that you got the annual invoice 13,000 560 for the rental invoice but that payment was made for 12 month if it is a 12 month 12,000 is the pure rent and 1,560 is the HST which simple simple word you can say tax amount so that is your input tax credit so you can get the refund from the government that's why when you book this to the ERP system you book like you know rent expenses I mean that prepaid rent 12,000 and GST HST I mean paid to your supplier 1560 so that 1560 will go to your GST HST return but 12,000 will appear on the prepaid schedule so always do that way so it's a very clean you know you can match invoice to invoice and your schedule is always net of tax if the payment is made in usd dollar right so that usd dollar multiply to a exchange rate you can get from the daily closing rate from bank of canada website and convert that usd dollar to a canadian dollar because you build your schedule into canadian dollar so it's always do that way and it's it's a totally like uh, you know my recommendation is as long as you keep a very good record and consistent record and accuracy is is very important always and follow follow the approach consistently uh, so that you know you can justify that uh, your work to anybody right and what we are going to do here is we have a rent schedule and we have a liability insurance also company liability insurance and if you have a more you can add the more tab here we also have a chart of accounts ua so what we want to do is today is we have a month here i want to bring the month as a drop down list so that i'm trying to work this how can i automate like prepaid schedule continuity schedule so let's do that first bring the drop down list like here select a month so just go to the drop down just go to data menu and click at here this uh, data tools uh, section data tool section there is a data validation and in the data validation there is a allow uh, you know drop down button there select the list and in the list in the source section just go and then select the january to december okay and come back and click at okay so that's it so you have here january to december is you know you have a date which is a sitting january when you select january i want the gl account to appear here description you need a real description all the time when you book the journal entry i always make sure journal entry is one of the real like spotlight uh, that auditors will pick up you know for the auditing 
audit and which is true because it's a it's a journal entry because you are really pushing the entry you know without having the general ledger right that when you do that always make sure always always make sure you have a backup and you can justify that entry and when you book also make sure you have enough details with that entry and then when someone will, will verify in the system also they can see that oh because of this reason this entry is made and also i want to see here the amount you know if it is a rent should come from the rent schedule if it is a insurance should come from the insurance schedule and um, uh, GL type, what type of GL is it? Rent expenses is always PL, but prepaid rent is the asset account or balance sheet item. So let's use here the B lookup. If you know the B lookup, which is a vertically lookup things, simple. So go to FX. B lookup is already here on the top. Select a function, B lookup. Click at lookup value is our rent expenses which is a b10 table array go to click at ua and that one is a description is in the column b and column c has the gl account which is a column number two then put here column index is a two and a range lookup is zero let's do that click ok here you go your rent expenses 6540 if you go here 6540 anyway i just put here 4 but it doesn't mean it should be 4 it can be 100 200 500 thousand whatever gl account you have you can just copy and paste those gl account here and just do a lookup and to bring that gl account in gl account section so that when you have a more other like prepaid account those gl account will come automatically so that you have a less touch point and copy that and just to you know just just to copy that formula below right uh, this is not simple like uh, very very like you know simple thing for the excel point of the view i believe that you know the excel you know basic excel already when you watch my video i don't go through the very basic excel so it's a more about you know kind of the advanced uh, i don't want to say advanced also i don't want to say too basic either right so these are the one that you need to know then before we do that right so first of all i want to go and build the rent schedule first so this way when you build the rent schedule um, in the rent i want to talk here slightly you know a little bit about the rent how to build the prepaid schedule right so this is the format you have so i'm not going to talk about the format right now i do have a here three different office so one is a toronto montreal and a chicago the company has three office and date paid they always list the date paid here any reference number or invoice number that you see a real backup then put it here you know just enter that in native currency if it is a paid in canadian dollar put it in the canadian usd usd anything like you know if it is a uk british pound put it in the british pound so i just have here canadian and usd dollar just to show you example then exchange rate for canada to canada is i just put here one and then just usd to usd one the one way you can do is simple you can do is equal to this multiply this native currency multiply the exchange rate which is a g6 let's multiply that but i always want to do this way right so this is even easy things is you if you know the if you can simple use the if formula if you know currency this guy equal to cad if it is a cad then i want same amount no multiplication nothing literally exactly the same amount because it's a canadian dollar and if it is the usd i mean other than the cad currency then we need to multiply with the exchange rate that's why we want to get total canadian dollar here so even that i always want to use the round formula use the round here and uh, cover the like a small bracket and then just 
just do that and then click OK. I think you need one more, one more small like you know bracket there. So copy that formula, paste below. What happened here? So let's take a look, right? Let's take a look. So this is a twelve thousand dollar. The first one is because it's a Canadian dollar. The second one is a twenty-four thousand again Canadian dollar. Third one is a USD. That's why. 24,000 multiply with 1.3560. I mean that one USD dollar, uh, the Canadian dollar is $1.35. I mean 36 cents, something like that. So it is. The first Toronto office is the payment was made for, of course, the future period. That is January 1 to December 31st, which second one is a February to January 31st next year. So this third one is a June 1 to May 31st next year. So how to build the prepaid is all covers 12 month rent basically. So I can simply do this equal to then this total Canadian dollar divide then 12. I mean that the month, I mean total rent divided by number of month, right? It's a simple math is, but always put this in front of H, put dollar sign in front of J, put dollar sign because you need to make the column, you know, absolute column because you shouldn't be changing the column when you go from one column to another column. That's why you need to stay here. And after that, always use the round formula you know, round formula, and then put the two decimals, something like that. So always, if you work in accounting, make sure you do, you use the round formula. Otherwise, it will be problem for you to reconcile penny. So just highlight this all and copy this formula, copy this formula from February to December. Then after that, let's add this, right? So the, the addition is, uh, I always want to go to the home menu and then use that, you know, sum or alt, uh, alt equal to. You can use alt equal to also, you can use, but make sure that your range is selection is correct. So range selection should be column K to column B. So K6 to B6, enter. Now your net prepaid rent balance. So what is the balance? Means total rent minus then total rent expenses means how how whatever the amount total you draw already from prepaid balance to book that expenses to your PL then deduct that and remaining is zero because why it is started from January 1 <coughs> let's copy this formula copy and go and paste all other below but remember that this one is, it starts from June 1st. That's why delete this up to May. Starts from June. Balance is, this is going to, this balance is going to next year. And next year you need to go until May month. You still have a five month next year. January, February, March, April, May, right? The same way, second one is a February. So you have to go minimum. I mean that February means January next year January you have to book this as the rent expense next year so that's the way you do now here what I usually do is I always put here checkpoint always do the checkpoint minus and then sum <coughs> sum you sum that January to December sorry January to December thing okay and then minus and this always should be zero here. So make sure it is a zero always. This is a check. I always put the checkpoint here. The checkpoint, always make sure you have a checkpoint or or you can say that uh, prepaid rent, right, balance. Prepaid rent balance. You can say that way also because it's the end of December. Any balance left that will go to next year so this is the way remember that any other rent if you have six or seven different offices you can bring those invoices make sure 
AP will record the payment details accurately here. Make sure date payment. Make sure the invoice number, which is very, very important. Make sure to keep the backup also in the folder. And then is it the real native currency that the payment was made? And uh, what is the prepaid period, right? That clear comment, what period that covers. So that's what, and based on that, put here month covered. So what is the month, total month it covers? And then build the same way as I showed you here. It could be sometimes the 15 days, right? You know, middle of the month. Remember that if it is a middle of the month, June 15 or something. So I should just do divide by, you know, divide two or something like that. So it's a middle of the month. So then that print should cover only 15 days, not a full month, right? You can do even if it is a partially, you can do partially. Make sure your math is accurate, but it's a simple math. You just, you know, total rent divide by number of month. And if it is a 15 days, whatever, and you know the fraction, you know the proportion you need to take for the first month. And after that, of course, monthly, it will go. So that's all you need to do. And now go to liability insurance. So I wanna go to the, you know, this, copy this formula and then just paste it here. Simple, right? This is a company liability insurance paid to menu life, like, you know, which is the insurance company, broker, insurance broker. Date paid, reference number, how much we paid, is it UST and what's the exchange rate? The same thing, right? We did here, if it is a CAD, then same amount, if it is a UST, this multiply this and we got that amount and when we have round there, you know, that amount. So it's uh, exactly same math. Prepaid uh, like period comment. So this also covers from January uh, to December 31st. So that's the way it does. I just wanna show here, maybe I, I wanna do here February. Let's do from February. And I want to do this as a, instead of January, let's put February and this one to instead of December uh, 31st, I want to do here January 31st, 2025, 2025, just to show you an example, 12. So now, same thing, same, okay, copy this formula and I mean that even whole formula you can copy, you know, it's, you don't have to go one by one or copy this because it's exact same, same template. That's why I just say to you that you can copy the same template, but only thing in January, you don't need to start because it is, I just changed this example to February 1, 2024 to January 31st, 2025. So that end of the year, it still left something. That's what I wanted to show you here and then again copy that formula like you can copy even both copy together and then bring it here and then paste like this you know checkpoint is this is still zero so which is good so again this one is a you know prepaid uh, prepaid insurance balance Prepaid insurance balance. What did I write here? Prepaid rent balance. Okay, perfect. Prepaid insurance balance we have. So it's still left over next year is a 13,325 because that amount will be the insurance expense for the month of January 2025. And if you have more you know, different type of trade so and different things, just do that, you know, copy this template to another like and copy the template and then just see this is a trade so trade so template and simply go and change here prepaid company liability uh, uh, company you know prepaid uh, like hold on prepaid i just want to do you know, trade prepaid trade so schedule right and then prepaid trade so is you know like uh, loss and so something you can type and then let's say that is a forty thousand dollar 
So that one is, uh, I mean, $40,000 and 1.35, but that one that so is December 2024. Okay, you put here one. Then what happens? You just delete this all this and leave this to December. That's it. It will go to December here. So this is your trade so again then prepaid uh, trade so balance that's it so you have here 53 and if you have a trade so of course you have you need here trade so expenses and then trade so like uh, I mean that prepaid trade so trade so so maybe prepaid trade so is a twelve thirty two zero 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 and uh, this one might be six five four two zero 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 then this is a PNL this one is a balance sheet so that's the way you can add right so you can add the trade so if you have a more as I say to you that you can create this tab copy this tab and just to modify top and put the details there same thing literally no different at all but you need a separate GL account for that right you need to go create that GL account in your ERP system create two accounts one is uh, expense account which is hit in the PNL second one is a uh, asset account because initially it will hit as an asset account and will stay as an asset until you draw that balance to the PNL. So now going back here and again you can copy this now simple way copy this and but now that's not what you need you need these two now copy that new number paste it here look at here that see new GL account is already here now question comes okay I want to link the rent expenses uh, for January is 1000 and prepaid rent is always credit balance here because when you book the entry in your ERP system you book this GL account you do debit 1000 and this GL account 1230 which is a prepaid rent asset account do credit because you need to reduce your asset account balance the same thing here right so when you go to the prepaid liability so prepaid liability for January is zero then this minus this and then just go to the trade so again trade so anyway that's that's the that's what it is so now before we do that I want to do first GL type it's easy I want to bring that go to FX click at FX again B lookup lookup value is rent expense go to COA click at B column B drag the mouse pointer to column D which is a 3 is a column index number and 0 and copy this and copy all the down below so that's all done now so let's uh, journal entry description what description you need to put first so let's work on the description and then we'll go first description is of course this is a GL description and add I want to add the month which month that entry would be so I want to add that right so but look at here that this one is a rent expense 45322 it doesn't look nice right so that's why what I want to do is I want to use the text text manipulation function text and c7 let's make c7 as a fixed i want to make fixed and then copy then copy and what i want here is a month 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 and y y y y let's see what it does you know if you don't know so you look at here now now you can see rent expenses january 2024 but it's it's there is no space so i better to make the space here so i make space space and m percent like do that m percent space and m percent 
See, look at here. Rent expenses, even you can write here for rent expense for January 2024. Okay, rent expenses for January 2024. So if you copy this guy all the way below here, look at here. Look, look this, uh, you really, you like it. So this one is a rent expenses for January 2024. This is a company liability insurance for January 2024. But if you go and change this to February, look at here, all February. Just need to go and change the select the date at the end of the month. But problem, because you selected the date, but it came February, but the data is still sitting as a January. So what, what can you do to bring the February result? That's the challenge. Here February has $13,000, right? So trade show has only the December has trade show has the amount. So I need when I go to February month and uh, I need to book the prepaid entry in the PNL system. So always journal entry is always debit equal to credit balance. Always debit and credit should be equal when you book the journal entry. So now how to do that? So we can, you can do that, you know, using the sum if formula. If you know the sum if, sum, sum ifs, sum, sum ifs formula, use the sum if, your sum range is from year to year. That's your sum range. And your criteria range is this to this. And what is your criteria? Come back. And your criteria is this guy. That's your criteria. So just make sure, yeah, that's a, make sure you just do this, fix that, and okay. See here, you are in the February month, you got 3,000. If you go to the April, still same, December 7th. See, it's changing. It's October, is an October number. It's a coming, 5712. Is it October number? Let's go to the October. That's like exactly the one, 5712. You got the 5712. So you just need to debit Rent expense, this GL you need to debit 5712. You need to credit this GL 5712. That's what you need to do. So now let's do the same thing for company liability insurance, like some IFS, like uh, some IFS, and then go to the company liability insurance, your your sum range is this is your sum range your criteria range is the date actually and comma come back and again your criteria one is your month that you have in the drop down so again make sure you fix that or even you don't fix it doesn't matter so now third one is again sum IFS and your sum range is January to December so again this to this highlight that that range again your range is this one and I just want to make sure that we press F4 from keyboard to fix that minus so now you completed your prepaid schedule. This is, this is a great automation. So why I'm saying this, take a look what happens. If you go to December, look at here that December you need to book like your rent expense, you book 5712, this GL account, credit this GL, then description is here clear copy that description put it in your erp system then you don't need to do anything at the end of the month you just have to go and select the month from the drop down menu and book the entry in your erp system make sure what's the critical 
the make sure that your accounts payable team has well trained like they should know what type of invoice you know invoices they have received and what type of gl account they need to select and what stage they need to keep the backup in a separate folder <coughs> so that you know you are not spending hours and hours to look at the backup uh, i have seen that you know they have a big accounting department and then they just process the invoice there they just think that you know their job is to process them no that's not what it is the accounts payable job they need to make sure first that what type of you know purchases or what type of services company has you know received from the vendor and then they need to select or maybe if they have other department like they send the invoices to their you know other department head or something they need to select a proper gl account so that you know it will hit to our right gl account with the right backup with the right approval so when when they follow that discipline then they have a strong internal control no error will happen things are efficient and when we produce the financial statement we can talk you know clearly and and more confidently also because we know the backup we know what's going on behind the gl account so hope you like this video my video was not just only to teach you what is a prepaid schedule i was trying to show you that how can you reduce your month end uh, work uh, the month end you need to reconcile the prepaid and again if you have a right process you set from the beginning and you have this type of the template you know proper template uh, which has all the automation then this will save your month end process uh, save the month and processing time and uh, you can produce the clean financial statement hope you like this video if you do then you can thumbs up you can also save this video to your friend to your colleagues if they are they are in accounting um, and if you want uh, to know other type of the videos then you can uh, you, you can write the comment in the comment section and let me know if you handle the prepaid schedule this way uh, so i just want to understand also your process is that how you handle the prepaid schedule hope you like this video and again uh, if you have any question feel free to contact me you have a great day bye